Hello, I am Stephen Montague, the Program Director for the Queen's General Internal Medicine Subspecialty Training Program. And I wanted to take a few minutes to tell you what our program has to offer. With virtual interviews now being the norm, you won't be able to see our lovely city or Queen's campus pictured behind me with Kingston General Hospital here on Lake Ontario. So I will try my best to give you a glimpse of what training and what life is like here. To start with what the program entails, our general internal medicine training program, like, like all 16 programs across Canada, are fully accredited and we sailed through our last accreditation in 2018. Historically, we've had three to five trainees per year, and this year is no different. We're guaranteed at least three spots, perhaps up to five. One of the nice things is we have a state-of-the-art simulation lab, which we can freely use for medical activities. And in this picture is some of our prior trainees engaged in a simulated resuscitation event. It looks like an IO is being placed. And we also do a lot of training for procedures in this lab as well. Within the program, there is a longitudinal clinic, and fellows are really the MRP for this clinic. And they're, they're scaffolded up to the point where they arrange follow-ups, they follow up on imaging tests, refill prescriptions, and all of that with the secretary support to help them navigate it. And the feedback we have is phenomenal. This is often not an area taught in the first three years of core medicine, um, and I think this is something we do very well here. We also have a very strong academic half-day series. Every year it's, it's tweaked and improved upon, and it covers quite an expanse of medical expert roles, which include things like obstetrical medicine, periop, POCUS, also a lot of um, beyond the guidelines topics uh, regarding uh, irritable bowel syndrome or Lyme disease. And it also includes a uh, tailor-made selection of non-medical expert roles, such as billing, marginalized populations, career development, and medical education. And at Queen's, in part because it's a single site with well-connected training programs across all specialties, there's many other opportunities available to you. There's four times a week sign-in rounds with the core residents with free lunch. There's weekly obstetrical rounds, weekly medical morbidity and mortality rounds, weekly medicine grand rounds, monthly POCUS teaching, monthly ECG rounds, echo rounds, uh, weekly infectious disease rounds, and really, you name it, there's as much medical activity as you have time for here. Regarding evaluation, CBME, we're a little different here. We did it first across Canada, and I think we do it quite well. We've come up with a practical approach that's reasonably painless. We pair you with uh, an academic advisor that knows the system well, and we're able to scaffold you through and get through the evaluations um, in, in a really functional system where most of the evaluations are triggered for you initially for the first few months and, and speaking with peers across the country I, I think it's a reasonably painless system here. The rotations that you'll have mandated and um, selective or elective rotations are as follows. There's two regular CTUs which you function as a junior attending and You'll be graduated up to the role where really you are the attending and the attending watches from the background to give you any advice or insight about differences in, in management. And there's also two short stay CTUs. And these CTU teams, they cover the eMERGE consult during the day and only admit reasonably short stay patients without disposition issues, which is kind of a, a fun, refreshing way to do CTU. You'll also have two months across the two years doing general internal medicine consults, as well as one to two blocks of ICU. And this can be at Oshawa, which is a short two hour drive away, or here at Kingston General Hospital. There's a block of obstetrical medicine in Toronto, which is again highly praised. You see a lot of hyper 
acute and uncommon presentations. You're also put up in a nice condo on Bay Street, walking distance of Mount Sinai. And this is in addition to a, a robust and growing obstetrical medicine longitudinal rotation that is combined with periop that occurs for two months of the PGY4 year. There's a month of ambulatory clinics, which often focus on things like CHF, CKD, and really getting into the subspecialty areas to capture what's most relevant for our general internal medicine practice, as well as a month of stress tests, where you'll be supervising treadmill stress tests, also looking at Holters, 24-hour blood pressure monitors, PFTs, um, to, to make you confident in this area, either so you know what it entails, or if you wish to do this in your future practice to give you that education. There's a mandatory community internal medicine rotation for inpatient care. By default, this is set up in Oshawa. However, it's flexible if there's another site you prefer. And that leaves in total 13 blocks of selectives or electives, which is a huge degree of flexibility and can really be customized for whatever your career or educational goals are. Um, for example, prior fellows have used this time if they wanted to brush up knowledge in a specific subspecialty, whatever that is, or if they want to develop a clinical niche. And niches in the past have included obstetrical medicine, thrombosis care, uh, point of care ultrasound, and other trainees have used this to start a masters or to work on research for those interested in academia. And another option that people commonly do if they're looking at community sites is spending a lot of this time rotating between different sites to see what practice location works best for them uh, and really get a sense of what's out there. Kingston General Hospital, there's two sites. There's, a, there's the main KGH site, which has almost 500 inpatient beds and a 10 minute walk across this park featured in the photo behind me is Hotel Dew, where most of the old patient care is delivered. So it's a pretty easy commute between the two. It's a quaternary care center, so we do quite a bit. We do EVT, TAVI, dialysis, some transplant, and the way we're able to deliver this in what is a reasonably small city, Kingston, is we have a huge catchment area from Coburg to Cornwall, which is really Toronto to Ottawa, and all the way up to this James Bay region, where individuals up there needing medical care are routinely flown down to us, um, which provides uh, a nice diversity of training opportunities and a diversity of patients as well. So KGH is a busy hospital. We have more than 10,000 admissions per year. And subspecialty care is often delivered on CTU. And what I mean by this is if someone's admitted with ILD or autoimmune, hepatitis or hemolytic anemia, they actually come to internal medicine. The subspecialists will consult and support the care, but we are the ones driving it as the MRP. And this is somewhat rare elsewhere. And the benefit is when you finish our training program, it really gives you strong generalist skills that depending where you're practicing, um, you're able to um, support and move forward patient care, even if subspecialty um, support may be sparse. Life in Kingston is pretty good. It's a small town, maybe 140 people, or 140,000 people, not that small. Um, however, a large proportion of it are Queen students. About 25,000 Queen students between September and April are here. We're pretty close to Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa. Only a few hours drive to any one of them, which is nice to go there for the weekend, either for events or for friends and family. And most of our learners live right on waterfront, an easy 15 minute walk to work across the park. And there's many activities, festivals, hiking, sailing. As well, we're known here in Kingston for having many places to eat and drink nearby. 
some of the main strengths I want to highlight is we have excellent clinical training, not only the breadth because of the subspecialty care model, but also the complexity of care. We're one of the few sites in Ontario that have an open ICU, the Davies 4 ICU. So patients that need pressors with lines who are on BiPAP or OptiFlow and need dialysis, we can admit and look after them and do those procedures um, up to the point where they require intubation which really builds competence and comfort with those acutely ill patients. You'll also be part of a reasonably small division. We have 20 internists in our division that all live in the same hall here. It's the same hall that the fellows office and the admin offices are on and everyone gets to know each other quite well. You do get office space shared with the other GIM fellows and because of the proximity with us we're daily checking in with how cases went, how research is going, how the weekend went, and whatnot. You will have an administrative uh, assistant that helps with patient booking, following up on tests, faxing prescriptions, etc. And the program admin is extremely responsive and friendly, which really helps our program to, to excel here. There's also many social events, whether it's from axe throwing, breakout rooms, paintball, laser tag, bowling, you name it. Um, we're fully embracing the post-COVID allowance of being able to engage in person and we have a really strong community where everyone really knows each other. We have the flexible schedule which I mentioned previously with 13 blocks that have a fair bit of um, flux to them which really allows for individualized care and attention to your training. We'll know you very well, we'll know what you want to do, we'll know what opportunities exist, and you have a plethora of time that we can customize to get you the training you need to succeed at whatever your goal is. This has worked pretty well and talking about prior grade graduates or your potential future, just over half of our trainees work in the community just under half go to academia. And we have graduates across Canada from BC to the Maritimes. They've all gone to their location of choice. And many niches have been developed that we've supported, which have included POCUS, OB medicine, perioperative medicine, thrombosis, stroke research, careers in quality improvement, addictions medicine, you name it. There's such a demand for general internists right now, often in the PGY4 year, requests start coming into sites asking if our high quality trainees would consider doing an elective there to see what the work environment is like in hopes that they would sign on to work there later. Also, because you get to know us, you're always part of the Queen's community or the Queen's family. And we always look forward to CSIM where we can connect with all of our prior graduates to see where they've gone. And this is a picture of last year's graduation ceremony in June. I will close with this aerial view of Queen's campus across Lake Ontario. Here is Kingston General Hospital. Here's the park. And these high-rise buildings are the areas that many of the students live on. Best of luck with CARMS, and I look forward to speaking with you more on interview day. Cheers.